of the economy, precious metals, gold specifically, and of course, Bitcoin 24 seven. Uh, you can sign up there at CryptoGoldCentral.com. You can also follow Andy at and on Twitter. Uh, Andy, thanks for coming on Crush the Street with me today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here as always. And, you know, I thought we'd just be talking about Bitcoin, but because all that's going on in the financial markets, we may have uh, many things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I mean, it, absolutely. You know, it, precious metals has been your bread and butter for so many years, and, and we've, we've moved into Bitcoin here largely. Um, you know, Andy, with the economy going the way it has, uh, let's get your thoughts here. You know, as we go into 2018, gold is showing itself to be pretty resilient. And, uh, I, you know, what what are your thoughts and reasons as to why we are seeing this now? Right. Well, look, when you look at the financial markets, and again, anyone who's been following me for a very long time knows my view, we're in a unprecedented fiat Ponzi scheme. And uh, at some point, it has to resolve itself. I mean, I'm encouraged by the fact that Bitcoin has emerged to give kind of a future like, you know, once we get through all the debt that has to be repudiated, uh, there's a brighter future. Uh, but still, that debt has to be repudiated. And when you see every single day soaring debt of the governments, institutions, corporations and individuals all at record highs and exploding, and now, finally, you know, do we have that catalyst in interest rates rising? And again, it was actually a year ago, it was January 2017, <laughs> when I wrote while well, still at Miles Franklin, I said 2.5% and upset. I said, if we go above 2.5 in the 10 year, it means they're starting to lose control of rates for all their modernization and QE and, and NERP and ZERP. And uh, the economy just can't handle it. Neither can the governments of the world. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think a lot of people have um, misconstrued your opinion on precious metals. So many people are, are even using you as a contrarian indicator. Look, Andy Hoffman's not even, you know, about uh, precious metals anymore. He sold his silver. Uh, but, I mean, this is the reason why you got into Bitcoin. It's the underlying bubble that's in the economy that yes. is is giving you your confidence in you know bitcoin and and the technologies that are out there that are yeah. i guess uh sidestepping the control right. of the central banking system and i mean any anything you'd like to say to that because i know a lot yeah, of, of people course. are out there uh questioning you know your moves here well i'm not sure why they'd be questioning my moves i left precious metals uh, when Bitcoin was three or four thousand dollars, after I'd spending the past year and a half pretty much talking about it every day, and it went to twenty thousand, and now it's ten or eleven thousand. So I'm not sure what the the move that they're questioning is, but I'll go on. And the thing is, I've made it very clear that I've changed my view because Bitcoin strengthened itself by surviving the scaling debate and moving through SegWit and the hard forks to the point where I now believe it's. It's uh, the most solid long-term store value asset. Uh, I've also said that I still own some gold because I do believe gold's, uh, gold's value is immutable over time. I don't believe silver's use case is the same now that we have digital assets, but I still hold gold because I believe strongly in it over time. Most importantly, because of after four decades of suppressing the price, the, the mining industry has been destroyed. So while they keep printing money and inflating, there's going to be no chance of any increase in mine production, probably for a decade or more. Uh, so I think I see a supply demand shortage in gold that's going to persist. That said, you know, people want to say, well, look at gold. It's so it's doing so well. Gold's up three percent this year. I mean, the dollar is free falling. It's at a four year low. Interest rates are surging. The stocks are having a, are having a hard time now. I mean, things are really bad out there. Gold's up three percent this year. The range of, look, it was crushed, everyone knows, back to going to April 2013, uh, Obama had his closed door meeting with the top two big to fail CEOs, and that day Goldman Sachs put out a short sell recommendation on gold, and then two days later, you had this big massive crash, and, uh, and it never recovered. And since that time, which is now five years ago, the resistance range has been 1350 to 1400. Every time it's gotten up there, whether it's the Brexit or the Trump election, 
whatever it is, it's always been knocked down. So when everyone's saying how great it's doing, it's 1345 and it just won't go above there. The cartel is still there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the only reason, but that's what it is. When it breaks above 1400 and moves significantly, probably will be within a very significant financial crisis. And if that's the case, I'm pretty sure that Bitcoin will be a big winner. But yes, I believe gold will do fine. But the bigger picture for the world right now is, are we headed into a financial crisis? Is this just the first tiny little blip to the point where if the Dow goes down like 500 points from 25,000, that it's like a catastrophe? Or are we actually headed into what theoretically would happen if markets were not controlled, which is the highest ever valuations amidst the highest debt and the weakest fundamentals will revert to something far more normal? I don't know that right now, but certainly right now it is something that is on radar screen if it persists much longer, meaning stocks going down and or interest rates rising and the dollar falling, it's going to become an issue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Andy, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I Let's move over to cryptocurrency and, and one of the things that we want to talk about is essentially what's going on with bitcoin and, and it has been losing some dominance as of lately it went up to twenty thousand dollars it really sucked out the the value from so many of the other cryptos as it was moving higher but since we've moved down i'm looking at coin market cap ten thousand six hundred fifty one uh ethereum is essentially at all-time highs and uh you know actually right now there's a sea of red out there you just go down the list it's all everything is down at the moment and in general i know a lot of skeptics out there saying this this is the bubble the floor is about to be ripped out from underneath of all of these cryptos i know a guy like jim rickards is probably thinking that uh peter schiff and yeah. uh, you know others um, but I mean, I, I just let's get your thoughts on that. I know I said yes. a lot right there. So, but yes. I, you, you, you're able to. I know you can handle it. Yes. Yeah. Jim Rickards and Peter Schiff, who have been completely and utterly wrong for so many years. Yes, I'm sure they would love that to happen. But the world has changed. We've moved on to a world where digital currency is part of our future. It doesn't mean every digital currency is part of our future, nor does it mean that cryptocurrency is the only part of our future. It simply means it's here to stay. And anyone who was saying that it wouldn't happen has been wrong. And, to, and again, you know, goal uh, goal. Bitcoin is 10000 six hundred dollars right now the first time it ever got to ten thousand six hundred was less than two months ago so to say it's crashed is kind of comical because a year ago it was one thousand dollars but aside from the point look when we talk about dominance and first we'll talk about do dominance then we can talk about the market and no ethereum's not at its high ethereum is 1140 which is much higher than it's been uh most of last year but it was as high as almost 1500 just a month ago uh, but yes, do quote, dominance has gone down because we've had a lot of altcoin speculation. In fact, the biggest component of, of that dominance increase that we saw was Ripple, which isn't even a cryptocurrency, and it's pretty much a scam. And uh, in fact, uh, CNBC, they were pumping how to buy it only three weeks ago at $3.50, and today it's $1.20. Hmm. So again, this is how much you should listen to CNBC. But again... You've had a huge increase in speculation in altcoins, meaning anything that's not Bitcoin, in the past month or two. And most of them, like dot-coms, don't do anything, nor will they ever. And that's a big reason why you've had a, you actually have had a mini bubble in a lot of them, because they don't have use cases. And, uh, and then, of course, the other component of dominance is that most of these, if you look down the coin market cap, the top list, most of them are what is called pre-mined. They haven't even been circulated yet, so they're just calculating everything that they could one day circulate as market capitalization. Uh, in fact, I see here, it looks like seven of the, the only ones that are not are uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, which has an unlimited supply, Bcash, which is a, a fork of Bitcoin, and Litecoin. Everything else is pre-mined. So it's a lot of scams and a lot of fraudulent accounting that goes into dominance, but more importantly, when you talk about real world dominance, I mean, Bitcoin is probably 90 percent. The only ones that actually do anything uh, other than Bitcoin, Ethereum uh, has lots of competition in the future, but it certainly does something. 
uh, and Litecoin does something nominal, and you look down the list, Monero, but very few actually do anything. So I'm not too worried about dominance. This has just been a lot of speculation. And what we're seeing right now is, for the most part, a consolidation of a parabolic move, which was enhanced. First, you had the front running of all the hedge funds coming in on January 1st. And then, of course, you had the hedge funds coming in and just buying everything up to diversify. So, yeah, we're consolidating that. The uh, Bitcoin price is down about 50% from those highs, but it's back to where it was two months ago. And more importantly, this is the first time in the two years I've been in it where I don't really see any issues. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not worried about the network. It's growing fast. Adoption is growing. I'm not worried about governments. I'm not worried about hard forks. So again, people who are in a, we're in a bear market, which may or may not have bottomed. And uh, if it hasn't, this is uh, gonna be a very good time to accumulate for the future. Well, certainly buying and holding Bitcoin has not hurt anyone, and I, I'm a, a testament to that. I've been very happy with Bitcoin, but I, I think, uh, you know, we wanted to talk about some of the potential concerns, and you said you have none, but one of the biggest concerns right now is that it's one of its use cases, at least one of its use cases a couple years ago, or a year ago was the microtransactions and to be able to use it on a you know small scale basis. I know that's changing over time, but uh, a lot of people and, and even some businesses are saying, hey, we're not going to use Bitcoin for that anymore, and they're going to use some of the other cryptocurrencies to to transact with. And um, I, first of all, is that concern you at all? I mean, as Bitcoin may lose some dominance over time and people say, you know what, maybe this other one is better. Um, it, over time, how, it, uh, time and time again, is the degradation of Bitcoin at risk if people do that consistently over the next five years, let's say? Well, first of all, they haven't done any of that. I mean, you're, what you're talking about is, quote, people are saying they're going to. But right now, <laughs> cryptocurrency, for the most part, is not used by anyone for uh, for transactions. I mean, there's the only businesses that actually accept cryptocurrencies are accepting Bitcoin. And yes, less of them have accepted it uh, in the last year or two for several reasons. One, the fees have gone up because Bitcoin was in the middle of a scaling debate. And as a result of that, principally because this B cash has been spamming its mempool and making it making it uh, more expensive to use, and that's really that's artificial and that's going away now. But aside from that, I mean, you know, Bitcoin has uh, has developed its role, its primary role as digital gold. That's what the primary use case is right now. So whether people are using it transactionally or not really doesn't matter. I don't hold it because I want to buy coffee with it. I hold it because I believe it's a, a store of value over time. That said, while you're mentioning this, at the very same time, we got SegWit only a few months ago, and already the second layer, sca second layer scaling technologies that SegWit enabled have been going into place. This Lightning Network is the most amazing thing. I've already seen plenty. It's already on the mainnet. It's already being tested, and, or, and it makes transactions cheaper than as, as than any cryptocurrency out there, or as cheap as any out there, certainly as cheap as Bitcoin Cash or Bcash. So within a year's time, I'm guessing that this and all the other things that are being added, Schnorr Signatures is another one, Rootstock, all these things are speeding up the network, and I think that's going to be the big surprise of this year. Last year was SegWit. This year is going to be just how fast the network is. And by the way, if we end the year much faster, because right now already the mempool is down and transaction fees are down to nothing if you are a business. But my, my guess is that even if we get to this incredibly slow, uh, slow and cheap level to the end of the year, it still won't be used by much other than to store value. Eventually in time, it and other cryptocurrencies will be used more, but right now, they are the altcoins are principally used for speculation, and Bitcoin is principally used as a storage of value. Hmm. You know, Andy, I, I was at the Miami uh, Bitcoin conference, the North American Bitcoin conference in Miami, and blockchain I, conference. Yeah, yeah, it's a big <laughs> blockchain conference, and it was mm -hmm. the largest one to date. Maybe they've had one since in the last few days that has been larger than that one. But to my knowledge. 
that's the, been the largest one. 4,000 attendees. I believe there were 6,000 tickets that were sold uh, at the event. It was absolutely huge. And I tell you, you know, there was a lot of people concerned that there's a lot of greed and euphoria circling the environment at the moment. But one thing that I had to, I stepped back and, and told myself, I said, you know what? Money attracts talent. Sure, there's a lot of scams out there as well. But when you have an entrepreneur that's financially incentivized to, to solve problems and to bring real solutions to the table, who knows what's going to come out of this? And I was kind of inspired by that. Um, you know, any thoughts on this? Well, absolutely. I mean, there's uh, money has been, well, I mean, money's primarily attracted to money. It's been attracted to the prices going up. And as a result, it's attracted a huge amount of scams because ICOs for the most part are. Some are valuable. Some provide things that can actually be useful, but it's like the dot-coms. 90% of them are simply money grabs. Um, probably the euphoria is a little less than if they had the conference a month ago. But yes, it definitely attracts, uh, it attracts the good capital, the good human capital and the bad. And right now we have some of both. And uh, that conference from all the people that I saw down there or talked to said it was principally like an ICO love fest. No one cares about Bitcoin. They just care about creating their own money out of thin air. Uh, these ICOs or other other altcoins that are formed in other ways, and you know ICOs are cheaper, of course, than forming on altcoin with actual developers. Uh, so there's all kinds of things going on right now. I would say most of what's coming to the, the sector is negative, but what's positive is going to the best projects, and that's why Bitcoin is getting the vast majority of that capital. And I'm not just talking about investment capital; I'm talking about human capital. People are seeking ways to develop the best projects with the most profit, most potential profits, uh, personally and as an industry. And that's why the, the Bitcoin core development team and the Bitcoin periphery businesses are growing dramatically. But, um, you know, from what it sounded like down there, from what I've been told, it's for the most part people looking for like the next big get rich quick scheme and that's uh that doesn't work 99 percent of the time and right now it doesn't work in cryptocurrency either right now we're going to see a discerning uh of the uh the wheat and the chaff and right now uh, people are going to be surprised at how much uh chaff there is and how little wheat you know andy uh 27 one of the things that uh was said at the conference was that 2017 was the year for utility tokens largely built on the the ethereum blockchain and there's a shift there's a change that's happening i know you spoke with the the founder of pillar and uh tokens are going to be securitized or we're going to see security tokens basically uh being able to split up companies uh for equity in the way that you would do a stock and this is becoming a big thing i know the company polymath and t0 they're they're working very hard to tokenize equity in an aml kyc compliant uh, a huge competition to the stock market and i know that's not your focus uh but it, i find it interesting and i'm almost wondering do you see a value for uh, I guess the the stock world to be tokenized. Oh, I've, I've talked about this at length, and again, when you talk specifically about topics like what I spoke with uh, David Siegel the other day, because he's an expert in I ICOs and tokenizing and all kinds of blockchain uh, securitization things. But generally speaking, from a big picture, I've said this now for many months. Uh, I believe that stocks and bonds are the dinosaurs of the financial realm. I think they've been so abused by corporations and governments and central banks to the point that they've just become uh, get rich vehicles for the 1%. Uh, they're barely used for financing anymore. They're used more for financial engineering and for personal enrichment. The future to me, and then again, who, who gets the money aside from them? It's the investment banks who underwrite them, that the Goldman Sachs get to make all the money. Again, this is something society pays for. 
and uh, very few gain from it, except for the 1%. That's why I strongly believe that the future of financing, just like the future of money, I think, is decentralized, i.e. Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrencies that are decentralized, not that there's any others right now. Uh, I think the future of financing is decentralized, meaning we don't need investment banks, we don't need commercial banks, we don't need central banks. What we need is a, a well-developed platform in which people can fund each other. I mean, we already have this, quote, shadow banking system, uh, which in many cases is abused, just as the brand new ICO market is abused. But I truly believe that tokenization of the economy, both by private currencies and public companies, is the future. And I think people are going to be shocked at how little fiat currency is used compared to both cryptocurrency and, and tokens, uh, say, 10 or 15 years from now. All right, Andy. So in conclusion here, uh, you used the word double dog years. Um, what do you expect the world to look like, or specifically Bitcoin to look like in two to five years, two to five double dog years, as you put it? Is there any way to anticipate what things will be like uh, in light of the fact that 2016, so much happened. I mean, 2018, 2019, 2020. I mean, this is yeah. this is moving so fast. I mean, I barely remember 2016. Uh, 2017, I can remember the very end of it. Uh, you know, probably from Segwit on. But give, I mean, think about all the crazy things that happened in 2017. It's crazy. And most of it is is a memory right now. That it's a fading memory. And I think uh, when we look two or three years from now, I think the whole world will be different. I mean, this system is so unsustainable. I know everyone doesn't want to believe that because they've gotten so used to the powers that be, like holding interest rates down at zero and propping up the stock market and, you know, writing, putting out GDP reports that are fake. When everyone knows that the 99% are suffering, you can see it in the debt. You can see it in the debt in the governments. It's not like they're not suffering either. You can see the, the political turmoil in governments going on because of all the instability caused by this fiat system. It's not sustainable. It's uh, if this is maybe this is the fiat the next financial crash. I mean, it could be. At some point, we have to have some repudiation of this debt. I'm hoping it's not a worst case scenario, but it's going to happen in some way, shape, or form. And when it does, you're going to see the digital age emerge in a strong in a way that people can't even imagine right now and even myself i would bet you two well two or three years from now i would imagine that bitcoin will have a far more prominent role in the planet and that uh and the legacy finance system will be uh will be i i mean i would expect gradually on its way out perhaps it'll be more than gradual but you know the digital the digital world is here to stay and uh and bitcoin is here to stay so if there is any kind of material decline from here this is the time to be owning it mm, mm, powerful words there all right andy thanks for coming on crush the street.com if people want to learn more about you and, and get information on what you're doing let them know about cryptogoldcentral.com please yes cryptogoldcentral.com been in business unbelievable it's only like four or five months it seems like forever uh, you can get a free trial subscription. Uh, I also do cryptocurrency and purchase metal consultations. And uh, at, at Andy underscore Hoffman underscore C 